Welcome to session four of the course on customer value management. Over the past sessions, we have discussed what customer value management is, how to assess the value of customers in order to put them into a pyramid, and how to manage customers differently depending on whether they are on the top of the pyramid or at the bottom. However, all of this implicitly, although we didn't discuss it explicitly, requires the analysis and use of data. And this is quite obvious. How would we want to know how to calculate the CLV of a customer, how to calculate the share of wallet, size of wallet, without having data? So today, I want to talk about two aspects. One is the question of data mining, which more or less means how do we analyze very, very large data sets? And the second topic is the topic of marketing return on investment. Let's start with data mining first. When we do CRM, we have a very central concept, which is the concept of a customer database. And you can imagine a customer database as a big spreadsheet in which each customer has his or her own row. And everything we know about the customer, every variable that we have goes into its own column. So a customer base is a collection of all the information we have about active and inactive customers of the company. Note that the customer database should also include customers who we have lost. Remember session two, when we talked about either the probability of being alive in non-contractual settings or actually the churn in contractual settings, we need to keep those customers which we have lost in the customer database for the very simple reason that if you want to understand why people leave and why people don't leave, one very sensible approach is to compare the characteristics of those who have left versus those who have stayed. And you can only do this if you keep those who have left or the inactive customers in the database as well. Now, looking at the columns, looking at the different variables that can be included in a customer database, this can literally be anything you want and anything we know about the customer. It can be basic information like the name, the address, the zip code, or the telephone number. If you know the zip code of a person, you can relatively easily by information that tells you a lot of different characteristics of people living in that kind of zip code, which type of houses they usually have, which type of income they usually have, which type of car they usually drive. Obviously demographic information, age, gender, marital status, education, any type of psychographic information if you have it, activities, interests, preferences. Very important, the transaction history, frequency of purchases, amount of spending, because we use this, for example, in non-contractual settings to calculate the PE life. Remember when we talked about the Pareto MBD model in session two and anything else. Usually it's far too much to put it into an Excel sheet because a company may have tens of millions of customers <clears throat> and thousands or tens of thousands of variables. But the analogy of an Excel file is actually pretty easy and pretty accurate, at least conceptually. Now, when we talk about analyzing this type of data set, the first thing that many people come to mind is statistics. But data mining or analyzing such data set is far, far more than simply running statistics. There's a whole process that needs to be followed from defining business objectives to getting the raw data, identifying variables, getting insight, and defining appropriate actions. And data mining projects have the characteristics that they bring together three very different type of people. There is the business group, let's say the marketing managers, which probably most of you belong to. And you are at the beginning of the chain because you have to define objectives and you're at the end of the chain because you have to take appropriate actions. It's important to realize that the data mining project is always an action driven project. You analyze data or you try to get insights out of data because you want to do something better, whatever it is. You want to understand why some customers leave and others don't leave in order to ensure that customers no longer leave. You want to find out which promotions work and which promotions do not work because you want to continue doing promotions that work particularly well. Whatever it is, there's always an action that is associated with it. And this action will, in most cases, be the responsibility of the business group or, in our example, you. It's your job to define the objective, to take the lead in deploying the insight into actions, like, for example, doing new marketing activities, and in the process to check the plausibility and soundness of the logic. 
So even if you are not directly involved in analyzing the data and getting the data in processing the data, you need to keep an eye on this entire process because you will be responsible for the actions that get implemented. <clears throat> Of course, the first step that follows them is getting the raw data. You will not be able to run an analysis out of, on this entire big Excel sheet with tens of millions of customers and thousands of columns. You will pick some form of sample, like a small sub Excel sheet. Somebody needs to do that. This is usually somebody out of the IT group who is required for sourcing and extracting the data that you use for modeling. And the IT person then gives this data to a statistician, let's say, a mathematician, a business analyst, a data mining group, who looks into the analysis and together with you defines probably new objectives or right objectives in order to be ensure that everyone is aligned and to actually do the analysis itself. So let's go through these steps in a little bit more detail and to focus on the challenges of those. <clears throat> and the first big challenge has nothing to do with statistics. The first big challenge is asking the right question. There is you who has usually a decision problem. You need to do something. You need to take some form of decision. You need to implement some form of project. I don't know. Let's assume, for example, you want to introduce a new product. And in order to do this thing that you are supposed to do, in order to take this action that you are supposed to take, you need to know some pieces of information. And the first decision that you have to take is, what are the critical pieces of information that you need? What do you need to know in addition to what you already know to be able to take the best action? And how would you get this information? Coming back to the example, you want to introduce a new product. There are tons of decision in a new product introduction process, which price to charge, which packaging to use, which advertising channel should you use advertising through influencers, through social media, through print, whatever you want to do. There are probably 100 decisions you need to take, but you will not be able to get data on each of these decisions. So you need to decide which is the most critical piece of information you need, because that is the type of question you have to ask for the data mining project. A question for a data mining project cannot be, help me to introduce a new product better. The question for a data mining project can only be something precise as, what is the price sensitivity of our past products? What happens if I increase prices by 10% to demand? Or how does the best social media strategy work for us? You see, it needs to be much, much more precise, or to put it differently, it needs to be information-oriented instead of action-oriented. That is a very critical step that only you can take, because remember that you are at the beginning and at the end of this chain. So you need to define the objective and you will later be in, uh, responsible to implement the according actions. Once we have rephrased the question in the right way from an action to an information orientation, we need to look for data. First of all, we need to look for data sources. And this is very often a top-down, bottom-up process where you say what you actually would like to have ideally, and the IT team who is working with you tells you what can be obtained at all or with reasonable effort. <clears throat> Some things may simply not be available and others might be available, but they may take a tremendous amount of effort to get. And possibly they can be replaced by something not exactly what you want, but similar that is much easier to get. And now it depends on the company of how this is done. Some companies have one big storage Excel sheet, let's say, is one big database where all the data from the entire company flows in. You can call this a data warehouse. Other companies have individual databases in different departments, in billing, in customer service, in marketing, then probably the data needs to be combined, but this is different for every firm. Then you need to get the data. You need to define how the data gets from the database, the data warehouse that the company has, into a kind of format that later the data mining team, the statisticians can work with. And a very crucial step that follows then is to check the data quality. Does the data make sense? I encourage you strongly, if you ever get involved into a data mining project, to look at the data set at least a little bit yourself, even if you yourself do not feel comfortable doing a statistical analysis yourself. Just check, do some records appear probably consistently twice? Are there duplicates? Are there a lot of holes? Are there a lot of missing values? Is the data realistic? 
if you are in a business that is highly seasonal, then probably data from some month is more realistic than data from other months. Remember that if the data is bad, because it is of low quality for whatever reason, be it technical or business, then no matter which analysis you do, the analysis will also be bad, which means the information you obtained will be bad, which means the action that will be taken based on the information will be bad, which means you are going to have a problem because these actions is your responsibility. <clears throat> and then once we have this data set, we need to identify which variables we want to work with. We need to structure it in the right way. Ideally, we want to structure it in the way that I presented before. We want to have customers in rows, where individual rows summarize data, referring to each individual customer. And every column represents a variable. And of course, we need to define what are the variables we want to predict, for example, and what are the variables we want to predict it with. For example, we need one column that tells you whether a customer has churned or not, whether we have lost a customer or not, and a ton of other columns that tell you what we could use in order to explain why customers have churned. So we need to define target variables for which we then need values for everyone and the other variables. <clears throat> Maybe we do some analytical variables. Maybe we transform some variables from absolute values to percentages. Maybe we use growth rates instead of absolute values. Maybe we even have to decide to get rid of some variables because they have so many missing values that including them in the analysis does not make any sense. And this brings me to the last point, which is the variables that need to be kicked out. I told you at the beginning, a data, a customer database may have tens of thousands of columns, and that is true, but not all of these 10,000 columns can actually be used. Some columns may have the same value for everyone. Some may have missing values for a very, very high share of people. Some may be customer numbers that directly tie each record to a specific customer. Some may be too correlated. Some may not be relevant. So you need to be very careful in selecting the right data. And again, as before, I encourage you to get involved in this step, even if you don't like statistics and don't like analyzing data yourself. At this point, we have not done a single point of analysis. We have just loaded data, and now we look into different types of variables. The only level of statistics that you need up to this point is calculating percentages and growth rates. The statistics come actually in the next step, where very often what you do is you take the data that has just been defined in the previous step, you split it into two groups. Usually you use one training set and one testing set, and then you do statistical analysis. If you do not want to, you do not need to get involved in this. You do not need to actually decide which specific statistical method to use, because for that, you have your business analyst and your data mining team. They are better, most likely, than this than you. If you want to get involved, you can, and it can be as simple as a regression, and it can be as complicated as a deep learning neural network, and there are hundreds of different tools to choose from. But here's probably the step where you have to trust the data analysis team. But remember, if you ensure before that you ask the right question, that the data makes sense, that it is realistic, and that the data set overall can be used, then it seems likely that the results that the data mining team will generate now will also be useful. Still, you always need to ask the question, do the results make managerial sense? Because there may be many, many different models that work, but not all of them give you the type of information you need to take the correct actions. I know that people very often get scared of data mining projects. And I know many people of you, and probably many of you watching this video, they don't like statistics. They don't want to get involved in this. Some of you may really love statistics, and for them, data mining may be a perfect thing. But others may not like it. But even if you do not like it, I want you to remember that you are at the beginning and at the end of this chain. So you are responsible for asking the question and implementing the action which means it is in your inherent self-interest to keep an eye at this, at least to the point where you are comfortable. 